You are looking at volumetric clouds to fly through, realistic ground obstacles to traverse, chunky lens flares on a custom skybox, custom paint jobs for the stock parts, and reflective spacesuit visors to farm that dirt rated karma. And all that is slightly modded Kerbal Space Program 1 released 12 years ago. This video featured a total of 15 visual mods and their dependencies. Majority of mentioned modifications even exceed KSP2 graphics, and performance on the same hardware is something about 5 to 10 times better. But, well, this is not so difficult when you are competing against 30 man studio of game dev professionals and multi billion publisher in 2023. In this video, I want to help by making your KSP1 build to look better than KSP2. Even if you never modded KSP1, I would try to make this as easy as I can. This video is focused on the graphics alone, without altering gameplay or adding extra parts. After all, there are more than 6k of KSP1 mods out in the wild, and finding the right combination can be challenging at best. There would be a total of 3 main ways of mod installation. Manual download and install, easy install through scan, and minor tweaking of outdated mods to make them functional one more time. There are some minor challenges for each single way, and only combination of three can achieve the desired results. So make sure to follow the sequence in this video, and use correct way for each particular mod instance. And this is the reason why I do not provide mod list down below. This is step-by-step -step tutorial, and not the recipe for uh, compatibility issues. So without further ado, let's jump into KSP1 mod that rocks so much. That would be a rocky start for any rover aerospace engineer, starting from a clean slate, even if they are a uh, bolder ones. Parallax 2.0 is one of the best KSP1 mods released in the last several years. This extension focuses solely on the ground textures, scattered objects, collision mesh for these objects, and on uh, some very impressive foliage on land and even underwater. But as mentioned before, this is ground focus modification. So if you are only building space stations, or maybe you are doing only deep space missions, you can save some performance on a lower end system by not installing this modification. Or maybe you can have separate installs for separate kinds of space missions. And speaking of installs and installation, Parallax should be a manual install because this way you can avoid a lot of compatibility issues. First, you need to download the latest release of Parallax from the Link GitHub page. And by the way, all the links for the mods and software would be down below in the pinned comment. And of course, for the Parallax itself, there are three components. Parallax code itself, Parallax stock textures for your planetary surfaces, and Parallax scatter textures for your generated objects. To install all these, you need to open root folder of your clean KSP 1.12.5 install, and then you need to open game data folder. Now, take the contents of three Parallax zip files and place them inside of your game data folder. To enable ground collisions from scatter generated objects, you need to go into Parallax folder inside of game data, then open config folder and open parallaxglobal.cfg with any text editor. Under collision settings line, you need to change enable collisions from false to true, and now you need to save the file. Parallax obviously have the mod dependency, and make sure that you install Copernicus before launching the game. And here I do recommend to use comprehensive Kerbal Archive Network or simply short scan. Scan is a very powerful utility tool to manage and update majority of KSP1 mods. And once you start Scan, you need to set up your game instance and then install Copernicus. This is a pretty simple process, just you need to make several clicks and just designate the correct install of KSP. Good thing with Scan that it also installs dependencies for mod that are flagged by the mod developer. This feature alone saves you a lot of time and fix majority of compatibility issues. And if you ever run into outdated version of mod on scan, you can always go to the version tab in scan and install the latest version of mod. And even the mods that are from years ago often completely functional since like really often the only difference is several lines of code to tell that this mod is updated to the current version of the game. Next step is small list of very handy mods that have nothing really to do with the visuals, but these are mods that I end up installing on every single KSP1 build that I ever use. Uh, first of them is KSP Community Fixes, which is library of numerous bug fixes and quality of life features. Next one is Community Part Titles and Community Part Titles Extras Categories. They basically rearrange parts in way better way and shape than vanilla game. And I do not install scan recommendations, since this achieves nothing except of bloating loading times and we really want our KSP1 build to be as simple, as focused and as lightweight as we can get. 
Next one is Docking Port Alignment Indicator, which is really nice UI for anything that involves docking of two crafts. And finally we have Trajectories, which is a really nice tool if you plan to land anything on the planet with atmosphere. And last one can have a big performance hit when you toggle it in the game, but it is so good that I was running it anyway, like 4 years ago when I had like RX 570 and 15 FPS. And also you can toggle it on and off, so performance hit is only when you're actually using this modification. After applying this small package, we still need to launch our game for the first time and to set up parallax in the game settings. Terrain shader quality should be set to high or ultra. And now we have the first bit of our KSP1 build, ready to roll some rovers. Yeah, that a fun. <laughs> We have taken care of our ground, and now for the second round of weekend, let's focus on the skies, clouds and bunch of shadow effects. Most important and must have framework is EVE or Environmental Visual Enhancements Redux in its full name. By itself it just adds cloud framework to the game, do not install if default configs and make sure to use, well, if Redux version, which is the latest version and most performant version. Then you need scatter that creates, well, atmospheric scattering, <laughs> duh. And also it does shadows from the clouds and eclipses, waves on the water and many other features. Well, it's actually quite a huge modification by itself. And make sure to install scatter default configs and scatter sunflare. At the moment scatter is flagged as incompatible by scan, but this is not the case. So to install all three scatter modules, you need to go under versions tab in scan and select the latest available build for the scatter. Obviously first you need to start with the scatter itself, then scatter default configs and scatter sunflare. From this point, we can go into very different directions. Uh, we can install several visual packs, majority of them are mutually exclusive, for example we can go with stock if configs, we can install a stronger visual pack, or maybe we can go with my favorite spectra, which is like basically majority of the footage on this channel, but honestly this is like outdated 2020 way. It uses way more system resources than it should, and it will not push our graphics beyond, well, KSP2 mediocrity. And we want to do better than, well, mediocrity. Only saving grace here that these are free options that are available to everyone right here, right now. On the other hand, we have development built for EVE Redux from Backtrack. And Backtrack is the person who made huge performance improvements to EVE with the Redux version, and he supported Scatterer and made singularity modification that allowed to add black holes into KSP1. So quite a lot of his stuff is commonly used by KSP1 community and it's completely free. Only development built for EVE Volumetric Clouds is available on his page. Patreon. And this is whole another level of visual improvement. It not only include like volumetric clouds itself on Kerbin, it also add dust storms to Duna, volcano emissions on Lathe and multi-layer cloud hell on Eve. And while I was editing this video, like I, I, I like uh, just weather effects released. Just like like this, you know, like here you go, 12 year old game, volumetric clouds with those like Kalola la Kalala man. Nuclear clouds, yeah. This thing, nuclear clouds, and now we have weather effects. What next? I don't know. Probably like chemtrails or something. <laughs> I don't know. This is so awesome, honestly. And Backtrack definitely made more for KSP than 30 Man Studio over the last six years. So he definitely deserves more support and love than ever. And more support he gets, probably faster public will see this incredible mod release into a free version. There are instructions on his Patreon for the install. And the main point is to have only basic EVE Redux without, well, default config for EVE. So if you installed EVE config from scan recommendation on an accident, you can just uncheck it and have volumetric clouds ready built. Just copy contents of volumetric cloud zip into the game data folder, and then you need to replace existing files in your KSP game data. Also, I'm really curious what are your thoughts on this early version of the mod being behind the paywall? I have been avoiding this volumetric cloud thing for a long time on this channel, since it is not really like publicly available, so it's not really polite to show people People, something that not everyone can get, but in reality where KSP2 get announcement for announcement of patch announcement somewhere next month, it feels like it's way better money spent. Uh, also it reminds me of me skipping the school to not to be discovered for skipping school earlier. Yeah, that does not end well usually. Eventually like reality have the tendency to catch up with your deeds or the luck of thereof. Time will tell and after this round of tweaking, launch the game and make sure that everything works because it was quite a heavy round and next we will start on the small details. Next modding round is to add visual bells and whistles. 
First, let's take care of our immersion with plain shine and plain shine default config. Pretty natural thing, and it will light our spacecraft with the light reflected from the planets down below. After scan install, make sure to open plain shine in the game itself and crank up reflection slider. I personally prefer to crank up vacuum ambient light just a tiny bit, but this is more of my room quirk because I have like 2.5 meter window, <laughs> which is yeah, this is uh, really tight to your monitor situation and maybe to your lighting situation in your room. Next, we can replace our stock engine plumes with something really nice, uh, which is basically your waterfall core and stock waterfall effects. First check the waterfall core, then check B9 part switch and finally check stock waterfall effects. While everything is on scan, you still need to manually toggle the B9 part switch dependency, otherwise waterfall core and stock waterfall effects will not install together. And next, we can add translucent effects to our parachutes and solar panels with combination of Shadi and Textures Unlimited. Do not install Shadi. And this is really convoluted. Basic thing here is Textures Unlimited have the same functionality as Shadi and if you install both, they kinda can be in conflict. And here's the thing, we will need the textures unlimited later. Very convoluted as heck, naming is super super confusing. Shadi through D, you install, you install textures unlimited, you ignore Shabby through B, at least for now. Next, we want to replace our default skybox with something a bit more interesting. For this, you will need texture replacer and the skybox of your choice. First, you install texture replacer and then you can search through scan by typing skybox in the search bar and in the metadata, there is usually a link to check out screenshots for any skybox in question. I personally prefer Poodle Skull Nebula Skybox. For me, it's like kind of fitting for the cartoony nature of Kerbals and, you know, like staring into the black void, it kind of gets old pretty fast. Next bit is to make sound better or Kerbal as properly named. Here here we have better Kerbal, which is a really nice and simple option that makes a lot of improvements for Kerbal, but we can do even better. We can add custom sound flares on top of better Kerbal. For that, we will need to get our hands dirty and resurrect our dated modification with total of two lines of code. So far we manually installed Parallax, Scan installed Copernicus and like several very nice quality of life extensions. Scan installed if Redux with Scatterer, manually upgraded them with development built of if volumetric clouds. Then Scan installed Waterfall, Textures Unlimited, Shadi, and replaced our skybox with Texture Replacer while improving sound effects with better Kerbal. So yeah, two lines of code at this point is kinda nothing. And now we download some flares of Mar from SkyDoc. This is a selection of multiple mutually exclusive sound flares and you need to open the zip file and check out screenshot preview and select the one that you like the most. I personally like the ISK uh, sound flare since I like my things to be chunky. I love my fat guitar necks, like Gibson 59 round back, yeah, nice one. Or maybe Fender Vintage Telecaster necks, the V-shaped ones, ooh, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, what I was talking about? Some flares of Mar. They will not work with the current version of the scatterer. First, you need to unzip some flare subfolder of your choice into your game data. Then you go to your game data and some flare of Mar folder. Then you open stock folder inside of that. Then next some flare name folder that is your some flare of choice. And inside of that you will have some.cfg file. Uh, first you need to open it up with any text editor. And then you need to, to add the explanation mark syntax version equals two after the line number. Six. After that, you need to adjust brightness of the main flare in now line number 9. And here we have flare settings equals to four numbers. And we are interested in the first one, which is well responsible for the transparency of your sound flare. For my case, for the ISK one, it was 0.7. I just changed it to 1. And if it is not done, sound flare would remain translucent and you will see the sun disk in the game. And next, you can call yourself Necromancer since you just resurrected the dead modification. Evil love for smiley smiley face. Man, that was too much coffee in me. All right. <laughs> now we are getting comfortable with being armchair modern ourselves. Next, let's make a small little extension from the scratch. Uh, you know this bit where KSP2 CGI's trailer have the visor reflection? Yeah, we can totally make it in KSP1. There is no mod out there that do this thing specifically, and it is like a small trade little secret of KSP cinematic channels. And by the way, those like CGI trailers, they cost around like 10 grand per second of footage and KSP2 does not have this feature in the game. Now we need to make 256 by 256 pixel texture, uh, and that can be done in pretty much any picture 
upgrade it in software. And you can use black for the dark silver or just experiment with other colors if you want something different. You can well use pink, whatever. Now you can save this file named EVA Visor with .png extension inside of Game Data, Texture Replacer, Default Folder. Make sure that real-time reflections are enabled for Texture Replacer inside the game. And do not forget to enable reflections in the game settings itself, because otherwise it would be just a black texture. And I do not know how and where to collect your 10 grams per second, but at least we have a fake KSP2 feature in your KSP1 build. Alright, we have achieved a majority of visual flair, but even with the best graphics out there, we are still playing voxel-based game with a rather limited part customization. So, this round is all about customizing your creations, and KSP2 made a really right step into the right direction. It's kinda great, but it's still extremely basic. Now, we need to manually install Textures Unlimited Recolor Depot, or simply short TURD. 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 Yeah. I'm not making it up. Third is the best customization mode for KSP1 parts. You can recolor some parts with 3 channels, and some parts have up to 9 channels to go bonkers with level of detail. I don't know, like, this is so incredible. And also there are like 3 incredible sliders outside of the color. Like, the first slider in Tart it controls the plastic slash metallic scale, uh, second one controls the reflection scale, and third one controls level of detail and the weathering. So you can pretty much go all the way from like shiny shiny Nabu Royal Yacht to the weathered gunship Kukinante. Or just paint everything red and it will just go faster. So, Tart have a bunch of color presets and allow to copy paste full paint job scheme from one part to another, or just copy paste standalone colors. Only thing that I really miss is ability to make presets across your save files and ability to apply the color scheme for the whole craft. And to be honest, 4K UI is a bit small and this mod doesn't have a UI adjustment built-in feature. And as mentioned before, TART is a manual install and you will need to download two packs to cover vanilla parts and DLC parts. Also, there are config files for several popular modes out there. Uh, and it also includes uh, procedural wings. So yeah, if you are feeling like procedural wings in KSP1 with custom paint job, you are covered. And the last one by far would be one of the most performance-heavy extensions. And I'm talking about third-party post-processing for KSP1. P1. And most popular one is 2FX. And this is basically like the most updated one, the one that have the presets and really handy to use. Only issue here that when you install it through scan, it will require the shabby dependency. The thing is that it doesn't really require shabby dependency, you can manually install it through the GitHub and you already have textures unlimited that actually cover the 2FX and it's kind of from the same author, kind of bizarre, because Shabby basically is the same thing. Think with the Shabby and combination of Shabby, Textures Unlimited and Third, that in some cases, customization for the fairings will not work. I encountered this issue before, especially when I was making the first install for this video. This issue was there. But the second time when I was just testing everything out and basically recreating every single step for this video, uh, well, it was not there. And I was like installing 2FX through scan. So you can try to install it through scan and if you encounter this issue, you just manually install 2FX. Kind of annoying, but if you have this issue with the third, it's kind of, well, the necessary evil. And main obvious benefit of 2FX is ability to swap between presets on the fly and community provide quite a lot of custom presets. So you do not need to be some sort of a game developer and know every single graphical term to adjust your settings. That's kind of nice. Uh, also, if you are looking for some specific look or make uh, like making some sort of thematic screenshot or video, this is basically a must-have extension. For example, you can make your KSP look like a vintage tape from different era of space exploration. Kind of handy. And speaking about awesome features and awesome ideas, I have two more KSP modern videos in the work. One would be about Interstellar, another one would be about, well, overall immersion. This video takes quite a lot of time to make, usually about 40 to 60 hours, so the, all the YouTube engagement magic is down below. The more you share, the more your ball will be plentiful. <laughs> the, yeah, that was really bad impression of expanse builders. So yeah, until the next one, have a nice one and Yakis out.